Hey everybody, this is Matt from Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews and I am here today to do my most requested video. A video that I've never really had a lot of inspiration to do but I keep getting so many people asking about it that I've just got to finally do it and that is doing a bookshelf tour. Uh, so before we get into it, I just have to tell you that I'm a little embarrassed to go through this because quite frankly, I don't have a ton of books. And mainly the reason for that is I listen to a lot of audiobooks and everything that I read nowadays is ebooks. So there's so many books that I've reviewed on my channel that you're just not gonna see back there. This is books that I was into like, you know, a year or two, three ago, uh, back when that's all I read was physical books. So let's just get down into it. This shouldn't be too long. Um, I guarantee it won't be more than like 20 minutes or so. Um, so here we go. All right, so starting on the top, I do all of these in alphabetical order uh, by author's last name. That's just how I roll. Um, I don't even know what that first book is. It must be one of my wife's. She's got some books on here and she is a marriage and family therapist. So we have very different books. Um, we've got Watership Down. That is a book that I think my mom bought me when I was a kid. And I said, you know what? I am not going to be into these talking animals. Instead, I'm going to get this book called Red Wall. And it turned out to be talking animals. And that's how I got into fantasy. Uh, then I've got The Rose, a book that I don't really like, but they're the first books that an author ever sent me. And I thought it was kind of cool. So I kept them. Uh, then I've got a bunch of Asimov books. I got into an Asimov stage when I was in college. And I think I've got quite a few. So these are a bunch of Asimovs. Got the Robot series. Uh, got Foundation there. Got... I don't even know what that is. Uh, got Pebble in the Sky. I think that's three different series I've got here. Then I've got a little how-to on how to have a golden retriever for dummies because I have a golden retriever and I am a dummy. Then I've got The Quiet Warrior. Uh, that is a biography and I don't even know who it is. I read it quite a while ago. I used to really be into history books and they kind of blend together over time. Um, so over here we've got Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. That is like my wife's favorite person in the world. So she's got a couple Brene Brown books there in a row. We've got World War Z. Uh, my brother got that for me for Christmas one year and I think it's awesome. I actually think about this book from time to time and I think I should actually get back and, and read it because it had such a fun experience. And the movie was so bad. I feel like that could just be such a good TV show. Um, that never happened. I think it'd be awesome to have like an episodic TV show of this because of the way it was written. Then we have a biography of Ernest King, uh, another World War II book. You're going to see that as a common theme here. Um, then Sacramento's K Street there. I am from S Sacramento area and local history book. Um, Double Indemnity. That sounds like something my brother got me. Um, Chicken Soup from the Mother's Soul. I'll let you guess whose book that is. That's right. It is not mine. Uh, then Ender's Game. Read that a couple times. It is well used. And then a big Tom Clancy collection. I got into that uh, when I started working down in the Sacramento Capitol. I work in politics. And I took Light Rail every day. And I got super into Tom Clancy books. Um, and I don't know why. I'm not like a big mystery guy and a thriller guy. But... They appealed to me at the time before I found out that fantasy is more of my thing. Um, going down a little bit more Tom Clancy and then 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, Parent Hacks. Um, man, got to learn how to take care of kids. Then a couple big black company books. I'm really big. People are going to be weirded out by this, but I hate book covers for hardbacks. I love hardbacks, but I hate the book covers. I throw them away instantly when I get them. So you're going to see a lot of that theme. Um, then Agincourt by Bernard Cornwell. I'm actually excited. I'm going to be reading some more Cornwell books pretty soon uh, later on this year. Then a biography on George Marshall, a uh, general in World War II and one of my favorite Americans of all time. Uh, the Mild Clinic, A Guide to a Healthy Pregnancy. Uh, yep, I actually did read that, but it's my wife's. Then a Dalai Lama book. Uh, I go on a yearly trip to Washington, D.C. for work, and that was on my pillow when I got to the hotel. So I thought it was kind of cool, and I read it in a couple days, and it was not good. And then Sewell, a book that I have not read yet. This got sent to me, and I think it's just such a beautiful book that I had to showcase it. Um, Discovering Your Soul's Signature. Yeah, that's another wife book. Um, the Forgetting Moon. This is a autographed copy by Brian Lee Durfee. I am obsessed with these books and 
I can't wait to reread them someday. Then, The Blackest Heart. This is another Brian Lee Durfee book, and I just finished up reading the last in the trilogy and thought it was amazing. Uh, Gus the Great. This was my grandpa's book, and I never read it. Um, then The Monuments Men, another World War II book. And then this is my pride and joy. This is my hardback Malazan Book of the Fallen with two books at the end that are different and they're bigger and it annoys me greatly. Uh, three books, right? So Toll the Hounds, Dust of Dreams, and The Crippled God are all the bigger versions. And that sucks, but it is what it is. It's some more Erickson. We got Forge of Darkness, Fall of Light. Um, this is Carcanus. And then we've got a couple Esamont books. And I love that Esamont and Erickson have similar last names because I can feature their books next to each other. And it's awesome. I need to never read a book that has a E, R, and later than an I. That'd be cool. Then some more kids books. Don't even know what's on the bottom here. This is a bunch of my wife's books. Uh, the Lost City of Z. That seems like another book that was gifted to me at some point. Um, what else here? More wife books. The Shadow of the Gods. This book is badass. Read, read John Gwen, everybody. He is amazing. Um, let us go back to the top. Bookcase number two, a bartending book. I'm not really a big drinker, so I don't know why I have that. The Umbral Storm, love this book. Think the cover is just beautiful. Um, Pike's Peak or Busted. This book was actually written by my great, great, great grandfather about his journeys. Legitimately good book and I love it. Then Game Change, I borrowed that from a friend that I play tennis with and I never gave it back. So if you're watching this, I am so sorry, Tom. Um, Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest. Uh, these are the illustrated versions. And then I got Ship of Magic and then I got an ebook. So then I never got more Robin Hobb books. So that is the end of my Robin Hobb collection. Then Wool and Shift and Dust by Hugh Howey. This is part of the Silo series. Just awesome, awesome apocalyptic sci-fi books. Then I've got some of those Redwall books I talked to you about earlier. Found these in an old box recently and I thought they're cool. I love the covers of these books. So I want to showcase one of them. Then I've got all the hard covers for The Wheel of Time. We've got a few on this shelf. Then we've got a bunch on this shelf. Boom, boom, boom. Crossroads of Twilight is small. That's annoying. I'll have to fix that someday if I care to do it. Uh, into the Wild by John Krakauer. My family's super into that. They have talked about it all the time and they got it for me and I just could not care less. Um, a couple old books that I had when I was younger and Orange is the New Black. My wife loves that show and I am guessing that she never read that book, but I could be wrong. And then we have two of the same book, uh, Commander-in-Chief by Eric Larrabee, another World War II book. I, they sent me two, and I have yet to give it away at the library, which I will do eventually. Um, to Kill a Mockingbird, I think I stole that from high school. Um, the Blind Side, I was given this by a horrific boss who thought he was giving me an awesome Christmas gift. And... I read it really fast to talk to him about it because I thought this is how I'm going to get on his good side. And then he never read it and didn't care about it. And I was left looking like a fool. And I'm guessing that his secretary bought it for me because he didn't have any recollection of it. Um, then Machiavelli, another book I'm pretty sure I stole from school. And then we've got a bunch of A Song of Ice and Fire. So these books, I have been obsessed with these books. And you have to see how obsessed that I've been over these things. Let's just take... Clash of Kings real quick for you. I'll have to fix that later. You'll see that it is like uber marked up with like tags everywhere. Drew all over the map, made chapter lists for everybody. Highlights everywhere. Crazy map at the end where I highlighted where everybody goes and does. And I was very obsessed to say the least about those books. Then just more A Song of Ice and Fire along the bottom. Got the collector's of editions, four of the books. I do not have the collector's edition, the Harper Voyager version of Game of Thrones. And I don't know that I want to spend like $100 to get that, so I'll probably never do it. Let's move on to number three. The Last Row. This row doesn't have a lot of fantasy on it, so I'm just going to kind of speed through it. 
you can see what it is. You know what's up. Just some history. John Adams, 1776. Really love David McCullough. Got a couple World War II biographies, Halsey and Nimitz. Got my summer reading medal. Get that every year. If you uh, read 20 books at my local library over the summer, you get a medal. And so I have a bunch of those and I give them to my kids. And then we've got a bunch of Discworld. This is the end of, this is the beginning of the Discworld. And then we have a whole another Discworld shelf of mostly the collector's editions. And they just cost so much money that I couldn't keep it going because it felt like a waste. Got this beautiful illustrated version of The Last Hero. And then that finishes out the Discworld. We've got the Godfather there. We have the Wise Man's Fear, and then this beautiful Name of the Wind book that I'm 10 year anniversary, and then in very Patrick Rothfuss version, he did not do a 10 year anniversary for the Wise Man's Fear. So thanks a bunch, Rothfuss. You've got me again. Let's fix the lighting here. Then we have Mistborn, the original books, and then we've got the Lame Era 2 books. The books themselves are fine, I just don't really like the content of the books. Then we have Stormlight, a bunch of Stormlight books, very well used, love me some Stormlight. Got Warbreaker at the end there, got another clearly wife book, and then Star Wars. Then going to the end here, we have The Help, another wife book. The Hobbit, then we've got the new illustrated version of The Lord of the Rings. The Guns of August by Barbara Tuckman, and like if you're gonna ever read a World War One book, that is the one you should read. And then the autobiography of Mark Twain, which is a bunch of rambling nonsense, even though I love Mark Twain. It is crazy. Then the longest book I have, Russia at War, that's like 2,000 pages, it's not split in half on me. Um, Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter, and then The Shack, another book that I never read. Oh, and Birthday Bag. And up top, what do we got? You've seen these books recently up here. These are the books that get sent to me and I don't really know what to do with them. So that's the first month I got books sent to me. That's the second month, got a small stack with the next month. So I will feature those soon. And those are my books. Let me know what you think and thank you and happy reading to you.